I believe emotional confidence is your ability to navigate, navigate situations in a way that it's in alignment with you in producing maturity. Welcome back to Practice the Podcast where we fuse research and culture to help you develop the mindset, habits, and skills that you need in order to live out your purpose of confidence. I'm your host, Coach Reese. Now it's time to get better. Let's grow. We're talking about practice. Not a game, not a game, not a game. We're talking about practice. Practices are meant to be competitive. They're meant to be competitive. If your practices aren't more competitive than the games themselves, you're doing the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. All right, y'all, welcome back to another segment. We're talking episode 27 of Practice the Podcast, season three. We are rocking. Um, And as we end out this season, we are talking about the energy, or sorry, the confident energy, energy given system, right? The confident energy giving system. And on last episode, we talked about spiritual wellness. Now that was a, yeah, I could have, I feel like I could have kept going and going and going on that joint. Um, so if you missed that, make sure you go back to it. Um, in the week before that, we talked about mental wellness. So today we talking about emotional wellness. I feel like I could talk about emotions all day long, like all day, every day. Like I could just, and I think I really actually kind of do talk about emotions all day, every day. Um, because we're emotional beings, you are a human being, but you're also emotional being And last week. We talked about you being a soul being right. Like you're a soul with the physical body. And a part of that, the next aspect is your emotions y'all. So as we break this down and we look at our, who we are as, um, humans, who we are as people, you cannot separate our, our emotions from who we are. You cannot separate our emotions from our, our ability to just be humans. There's no separation. Reason being is because everybody has emotions y'all. So the quote for today's episode is you're emotional. Now, if I trigger somebody, I apologize. Uh, obviously that wasn't my intention, but I'm sure it might've been triggering because often and uh, for women, you've probably heard you are emotional. And the reason why that is the quote said by somebody, probably said by some man to some woman, uh, because women are deemed more emotional than women. And the thing is, that's just how society has wanted us to think about emotions. So let me take y'all back just a little bit. Okay. So the confident energy system, if you missed out on the other episodes, is broken down into six different aspects, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, physically. Those are your core four. Then we have relationally and financially. Over the next few episodes, we're going to continue breaking these down um, in, 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 in a, a simple way. And then we'll continue to dive out from there. But I want to make sure you have the foundation. OK, so the confident energy given system is a system that is structured, that is set up the framework that is set up to provide you with the holistic wellness approach to living out one, your purpose of confidence, to be in your best self, to develop in your bag, to making sure you are confident in all these areas in your life and that you have a system and a plan that is set up to allow you to pour into you, give yourself the energy you need so that you can pour it out and everybody else can get your overflow from those specific spaces. Okay. So today we're focused on emotional wellness. There's a song that comes to mind. There's many songs that come to mind. Uh, for me, when I think about emotions and we've talked about emotions before, cause we'll probably always talk about emotions cause they have to do with everything that we do. Um, but all the songs, right. There's like, I think of emotional roller coaster. I think of emotions by Drake. I think of, um, E emotions by LMA. I think of emotions by destiny's child, right? Like all these different songs that talk about emotions. But if you think about it, music in movies are based on moving our emotions, right? Think about it. It's E in motion. It's energy in motion. It's our thoughts and our feelings in motion. And so we're going to dive deep into this. And when I think about, um, the research behind this, this is where I want to dive in. Okay. The research behind emotions is it's important for you to know that our emotions are in kind of like the second layer of our brain. Okay. The research term is called the limbic system. I like to call it the entertainer. The reason why I call it the entertainer 
is because when you think about it, music and movies, what do they do? They entertain us. So, um, and I'm a big music and movie buff. You should already know that by now. Uh, and so I call it the entertainer because when I'm watching something, it does something to me. It does something to my emotions. It does something and it makes me feel something and it takes me somewhere, right? From an, a, an experience, it moves me in a specific direction, okay? So you can call it the limbic system or you can call it the entertainer. As long as you remember that there's a layer in your brain that is responsible for your emotions and your feelings. Now I need you to catch this. When it comes to this aspect of your emotions and your limbic system, emotions cannot be controlled. I'm going to just pause real quick. Emotions cannot be controlled, but they can be managed. Now, at the beginning, our quote was, you're emotional. And usually, again, people hear this uh, going from one direction to the other, from a man to a woman, typically society. That's what society likes us to think. But the real fact is everybody's emotional because everybody has emotions. Women just show some emotions more than men, um, typically society, whatever, right, does. So everybody's emotional. So what that means is, or everybody has emotions, which makes everybody emotional. It just looks different. Usually when saying somebody's emotional, it's usually anger. It's usually pissedness, agitation, frustration, um, sadness, joy, right? But the emotions are massive. There's not just seven emotions. There are numerous emotions and feelings and experiences that we go through as humans that take us all over the place. Again, the emotion takes us somewhere. So it's important for you to know that as a human being, even animals have emotions. You ever seen, uh, you ever seen giraffes fight? What'd you think they fighting for, for fun? Man, Google giraffes fighting. You ever seen goat scream? You ever seen a lion run up on another lion because another lion or somebody tried to get his little cub? They call lions cubs or is that bears? I don't know. Anyways, um, all that to say is, Animals also have this ability, like emotions are things that are engraved in us. We just have the ability to speak um, a language and verbalize it, but not all of us do. <laughs> so this is where we get into emotional confidence, okay? Or emotional intelligence, or what I like to call emotional confidence. Emotional intelligence, as we've talked about before, is broken down into four different avenues. You got your self-awareness, you got your self-management, then you got your social awareness and your relationship management. A lot of folks miss out on the vocabulary. They miss out on the ability to really articulate themselves and how they are feeling because they don't have the vocab. They don't know how to describe it. Um, and so they just respond in ways that they used, they used to respond in, right? Um, and um, emotionally immature ways. So men and people are just in general, and I say men because of, it usually goes from the man to a woman of saying and calling a woman emotional, um, because women have been deemed more emotional in society because we show emotion in different ways. But even if a man is aloof and shuts down, it's quiet, those are also emotions, right? It's just, and feelings, it's just shown in a different, expressed in a different way. So when I'm talking about emotional confidence, I believe emotional confidence is your ability to navigate, navigate situations in a way that it's in alignment with you and producing maturity, right? The maturity piece is a big thing. If I get into a situation, I have confidence in myself and in my emotional regulation that I have the ability to show up in alignment with the person I want to be and in a way that is also emotionally mature, right? Where some folks don't have the ability to handle any situation that's not going their way in a way that's emotionally mature. And I believe that person is emotionally insecure, right? And so when we're talking about emotional wellness, your wellness emotionally is dictated based off of how well you prepare yourself, I believe, to be emotionally well um, when situations go right, right? Preparing yourself to be well or being emotionally well in um, high adversity situations, painful situations, um, scarcity situations, whatever it may be, depending, I think really depends on how well you prepare yourself when you're not in those kind of situations, right? Wellness is your ability to actively invest in something, I think, consistently, 
then it's not really well, right? It's not really healthy. It was just a one-off. It's like if you eat a salad one time and you worked out one time, that doesn't make you healthy. It means you just did something. So wellness is something that is invested in consistently across the board. On a daily basis, you're always making deposits into it, right? So when I think about emotions, I think about who we are as humans and how we show up. And I want you to ask yourself this question. What does it mean to you to be emotionally well? What does it mean to you to be emotionally well? Is it um, having boundaries? Is it pouring into yourself and and doing some self-awareness work um, so that when you're becoming more aware, you're able to figure out your regulation and how to manage manage what's going on? Um, is it, you take some breaths, you take it like, what does it mean for you to be emotionally well? And what does it look like for you to invest in your emotional wellness as time goes on? So those are questions I want you to think about because, um, our emotional wellness, our emotional confidence, our emotional maturity, y'all, it, I, I think it, it, it is what I believe it makes or breaks your ultimate success It makes or breaks your longevity. It makes or breaks the quality of your relationships, the quality of your decisions. Like I firmly believe your ability to be emotionally mature, emotionally well, and emotionally confident is going to make or break your ability. Number one, to live out your purpose with confidence is going to dictate and break, make or break your, the wellness, um, and the quality of your relationships, of your decisions, all the above, because especially now cats ain't rocking with you if you're emotionally immature. Right. Like those are going to be one of the biggest things like, oh, people are emotionally mature. I can't fool with it. I can't rock with it because that's going to lean in and dictate your decision making a lot of times. Right. If you get into a situation um, and you can't handle conflict and you go into a space, now you start acting emotionally insecure. People aren't going to rock with that. Um, Or people, I would say some people might. I know me, I ain't um, because my wellness My nervous system, my processing, my energy means more to me. And so as we continue to talk about things in a couple of weeks, we'll talk about, we'll talk about relational wellness. And that's something I'm definitely going to bring back up emotional wellness because they go hand in hand. This is where your boundaries come into play. This is where you are thinking about what kind of situations are you going to put yourself in that may, uh, pull from your emotional wellness, if that makes sense. So It's really, really important that you know and understand that number one, everybody has emotions. Everybody is emotional, period. Number two, emotions cannot be controlled, but they can be managed. It's really important for you to know that. So how do we manage our emotions? You manage your emotions by becoming more self-aware. How do you become more self-aware? You think about the thoughts that you're thinking. You allow yourself space and time to process. You journal, you reflect. You allow yourself to sit and look and say, oh, how did, why did I handle this situation the way that I did? Those are all things that are really, really important for you to be able to navigate if you're going to grow in emotional maturity. This is where also you can bring in, right, a therapist to really help you get to the root of why you respond in certain ways when it comes to certain things. That's a really big deal. Okay. So as we boil this down. I want you to think of, um, of certain things because I, like I said, I could talk about emotions forever and we will continue to talk about emotions, especially as we go through the rest of, of this man, we just gonna always talk about emotions. Um, but I want you to think about this. I want you to figure out how are you going to guard your heart? What does it look like for you to guard your heart so you can stay emotionally well? I want you to ask yourself, what does it mean for me to be emotionally well? What is my emotional wellness look like? in certain relationships? What does my emotional wellness look like in certain situations that I show up in a way that allowed me to be um, in alignment with the person I desire to be? When I get in this situation, how do I, why do I respond the way that I did? Right? Um, And the other piece is, um, I want you to think about emotions as being a part of your human experience, period. They're not bad, they're not good, They are the, and they shouldn't be separated by that. I think you can use the terms destructive, right? And I think I destructive and constructive, but I'll say this here is even in that it's not the emotion, it's our reaction. 
It's not the emotion itself that may be destructive um, or constructive. It's our reaction to that emotion, which is your management. So I may become angry and be very aware that I am pissed off, but my ability to manage what I've just become aware of is the key. Now that I'm aware that I'm angry, I need to take the steps to make sure that I don't respond and act in anger. What that's doing now is that's activating my prefrontal cortex. And what that is, that is my ability to think rationally. That's my ability to make wise decisions. Again, this is where we're saying emotional confidence, your ability to have solid conversation between your uh, limbic system and your prefrontal cortex. And you have to train that. You have to know that your brain is going to continually develop. So this is why it's important for you to become aware of your emotions and then know now what do I need to do in order for me to regulate for me to think, for me to think rationally, for me to make wise decisions that are in alignment with who it is that I want to be. Okay. So I hope that you found this information beneficial. Um, I hope that you're able to walk away with something that allows you to grow in your emotional wellness. We will continue to always talk about emotions because emotions um, are everything. But I want you to know when you're thinking about the confident energy giving system that emotional wellness is the core is a part of the core four and it's a part of the core four because you're when your emotions are well just like when your spirit is well you are well and when you can act in emotional maturity it's a game changer it's a life changer um, and you will forever benefit from being somebody that's associated with being emotionally mature uh because i'm sure you could think of a whole lot of adults who are not emotionally mature and you like ooh, you don't want nothing to do with them don't be that adult right? Don't be that person. So I appreciate y'all for being here. I thank you for rocking out with me. I hope that this um, blessed you in a way that allows you to transform your life. I want you to always remember that you are worthy of being the model that somebody needs you to be, especially when it comes to emotional maturity, y'all. I'm your host, Coach Reese. This is Practice the Podcast. Until next time, peace.